My favorite part of SwitchBot is the fact that they make dumb things smart and they make things move. And when you combine it with their basic designs of their devices, what you get is a really easy to install set of products that you don't have to turn your home upside down and still get all of this great connectivity with. And I went and created a video recently that talked about how I get up in the mornings and I created a system around that to get really the light managed in my home and to make sure that the coffee machine was ready when I got there because I'm a bit of a bear in the morning. What I was using is the Withings sleeping pad in order to kind of trigger everything. And unfortunately that device only connects with if this then that, but SwitchBot allows me to use if this then that as well. So I was able to move my curtains open to the level I would like. And I was able to start that coffee maker before I got downstairs as soon as I got out of bed. That little setup has continued to work for months now and actually I have great reliability out of it despite all of the devices there being based on an internet connection. It's way over 99% reliable. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by sharing with you what I know about SwitchBot and by the end of this you should be able to make a pretty good decision as to whether or not you want to try SwitchBot. Today's video is sponsored by SwitchBot, which would probably make you go, well, that's not going to do anything for me, but they have not seen any of this content. They've agreed to allow me 100% to go out on my own, and that's one of the benefits of getting a little bit bigger on YouTube. So you get my true feelings here today, even if they are paying for the spot on the channel. You probably think that because I make videos on YouTube about smart home gear, that SwitchBot sent me all of their gadgets and got me started on this platform, but actually it went in reverse. It was early on in our channel's lifetime and actually I found it online through another YouTuber who had created some great content and I thought this is a really great option for automating light switches or something like my coffee maker and not having to actually replace the whole thing. I found a number of other uses for the product including sticking it on a gym fan, sticking it on a couple of different garage controllers and even the remote controller for my garage. Plus then I figured out how to use it as a full light switch where you just put the 3M tape on the little actuator, you attach that to your light switch and it can both push in and pull out your light switch for you. Now it's about every year that I have to go and replace the batteries in any of those bots because I'm actually using them quite a bit but one of the other big benefits of buying the bots instead of some of the other smart home devices is once I move on from a certain need or a certain requirement for automation in my home then I can repurpose them and I did that with the one attached to my PC which very early on I figured out I don't really want to be able to turn off my PC remotely I don't care that much and so I was able to take that switch bot and go elsewhere with it. There is a situation that this product does struggle with though and if you have a really deep button that you have to press or it's kind of in an awkward spot or at an awkward angle due to the boxy nature of the switch bot, bot it can't always get it and that's actually one of the reasons I wasn't able to do much here with my garage door. And the other thing that's not perfect about these devices is you can request something to happen but you don't know if it worked because it's a button presser that's pressing a dumb device. You don't have any feedback there. So it's just a little bit different than a true light switch or a true smart coffee maker. But the first day I got a couple of those bots, I also got a Hub Plus. And the first thing that I noticed with that was just the incredible colors on it. Now, since that time, I have mounted it in a couple of locations. It has a great magnetic spot on the back that allows you to place it a lot of different places. So I've hung it up and it's a great centerpiece. My kid truly just wants that as a light in his room. And that's one of the most often questions that I get on the channel is, where did you get that crazy rainbow light thing and how do I get one? 
But that ability to hang it has allowed me to actually use one of the best features on the SwitchBot Hub that, again, takes dumb devices you have and turns them smart. That is the IR Blaster, and it's available on both the Hub Plus and the Hub Mini. This is the Hub Mini right here, and I do think that there is an improvement when you go from the Hub Plus to the Hub Mini in terms of its IR Blaster performance. This one just seems a little more accurate, a little more reliable. But even with the Hub Mini, you know what? It's not a perfect feature. That IR Blaster is very good. You have lots of devices you can pick from from the list, and you also have a custom device capability. That custom device capability has been very important in the past, but I still can't get some devices to work. Lots of those multi-device remotes that I have just don't seem to work with SwitchBot. But using that custom IR device feature has actually got me to be able to create workarounds for really complex devices like this lighting panel, which has a number of different colors, but you can't necessarily program that all into one device. So what I have done in multiple occasions is I have created multiple devices that just do the button presses that I want. So I'd take this light panel and I'd call a light panel orange, and then I'd have a light panel blue too. So I could switch between those two by just turning on the device I wanted with my voice assistants or Samsung smart things. So I don't mind that control method and actually that points to the fact that I have multiple of these hubs in my home pointed at different IR devices. To me though, the SwitchBot platform really changed the moment we saw them come out with SwitchBot Curtain. This was some really serious engineering we were seeing coming from this company and I got a demo set very early on, but they were 3D printed and you know the shipping world was pretty rough on them and honestly, they completely failed. I was totally concerned. Then as we got closer to the launch date, I got a new set and I was playing with them on the desk and everything's going great. But then I install them on my curtain rods and instantly I'm having trouble again. I even thought I might have to talk to SwitchBot and just give them bad news and say, listen, this product's not going to make it on to automate your life. But the fact was, I just needed to spend a little more time with them, figure out a couple of things, including the application, which, you know, in regards to the curtains, got a little more complicated than we'd seen in the past with the more simpler devices. My curtains were the type that didn't have any rings on them, and I think you call those grommets, but whatever they're called, I didn't have any, so I had to buy a set of those. They cost me all of $10 on Amazon, and then suddenly SwitchBot Curtain could move my curtains. After that, I ran into a little problem where the transition point would actually cause my SwitchBot Curtain to get stuck, but Alan and I figured out a little solution where he put a little bit of hockey tape on his transition spot, and it's a smooth transition, and that was fixed too. I also had a bit of an opportunity to move that transition point a little more to the center and it kind of got it out of the way enough that I was never going to have that problem again. Now the nice thing that I can kind of share with you here is that SwitchBot has said they're working on a little bit of a fix here and it's not a guarantee that it'll come out, but they're a company that has worked on solutions to the problems they have and that's been one of the things I've really appreciated is that over time, these little things have been corrected. Then I had to figure out the app a little bit and it was a little confusing to figure out that you had to install the first curtain and then add the second curtain within the first curtain in order to get them to pair. Then I had to figure out what to do with the remote, which I had to do after I had installed both curtains. So little confusion around that. Once I was to that point, my integrations with Google, Amazon, and Samsung started to pay dividends because not only could I move open and close those curtains, but I could move them to any percentage. And the little remote became a really useful device because I could take it to 50% or 60%, whatever I wanted to set with that remote. I could also set automations right in the SwitchBot app, but I only did that with my favorite SwitchBot curtain feature yet. See, these curtain devices are battery powered, and that means about every six months or so, you're going to have to take them down, plug them into the wall, and charge them. That is, unless you install and connect the SwitchBot solar panel. 
Then they charge indefinitely, and while I'm not in love with the fact that my curtains are a little see-through and you can kind of see that figure behind the curtains, they do stay charged indefinitely at 100%. But what that does is it enables a beta function which allows you to control the lighting in your home. This is by far my favorite feature and it works great. So what happens is those solar panels sit there and based on the lighting level that they're seeing, you can actually set the curtains to move. This is so powerful and again, it maintains that lighting level in my home. My other favorite feature is the fact that they are still hanging up on the wall. And I say that because my kid likes to open and close the curtains more or less depending on what he's looking for. And so he can now, instead of trying to pull the whole curtain across, he just does a quick little tug and my curtains stay on the rod and SwitchBot does the rest. The biggest problem I've had with SwitchBot curtains is within the integration to Samsung SmartThings. And that's because for some reason it is always showing 99%. I can't figure out why. It doesn't seem to really affect it very much, but that's what's always showing. So it's always kind of a highlighted icon. Speaking of Samsung smart things, I really like having these SwitchBot meters around my home. Not only are they magnetic, they can sit just about anywhere, but I find them pretty accurate. They give me temperature and humidity, and both of those measurements go into Samsung smart things. But the most or the best thing that I have gotten out of these is within my kid's room. These go great hand in hand with the SwitchBot humidifier that they sell. This is a great connected product and really one of the only ones that is available on the market today. I put that in my kid's room along with one of these meters and I use the automations right inside of the SwitchBot application. This allows me to control that humidity without any interaction at all. So it just turns on the humidity, the humidifier whenever it needs it and it will turn it off when it gets to a certain level. The only thing I have to do is fill it up and if I want, I can put in diffuser oils. That's a big benefit actually for a humidifier and for a kid if he ever has a cold. The other thing I really love about these meters is you get a lot of logging detail. And so I have a lot of these around my home at this point, and that allows me to compare the different temperature and humidity levels throughout my home so I can kind of fine tune things. With all of the end devices being Bluetooth and the hubs being Wi-Fi based, it's fair to call into question the reliability of a system like this. I was even personally concerned about it as I got into SwitchBot and I started to buy more devices. However, there were only ever a few ways that I experienced any sort of reliability issue and all of those have been network based. Now, that might sound scary, but there's some pretty easy fixes for most of it. Since it's only the hubs that are connected to your Wi-Fi and therefore to the internet, it's important to keep them online. And so I initially had a pretty weak router that couldn't handle very many devices from my ISP. And this meant that I would often come and find the little red light on my SwitchBot cloud. It would no longer be connected to Wi-Fi or the internet. But this was really easy. All it took is an upgrade of that router or to a mesh Wi-Fi system that is any good. It hasn't taken the top end Wi-Fi solutions to solve this. And if I ever do see one of the hubs being offline, it's actually to get a firmware update. Otherwise, it's been near perfect. The second network problem I've run into with SwitchBot is related to Bluetooth itself. I find that the hubs can get about 30 to 40 linear feet away, but this is gonna be dependent on Wi-Fi interference because Bluetooth uses that same 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency to carry the signal, and it's going to depend on the construction materials around your home. But that's kind of been what I have seen that the hubs can reach out. For me, when I decided to kind of cut it off and say 20 to 30 linear feet is as far as I'm going to let these hubs go, and then I went and got a second hub, when I did that, I was able to connect all the devices to something they had strong or good signal strength to, and it raised that reliability again. My third network problem has actually been the fact that it requires a cloud connection because honestly, most of the things you're gonna want to do with this platform are related to Google and Amazon's voice assistants or Samsung SmartThings or if this then that. 
those are the things you're going to want to use with it. Here, there's not a good solution today, but what I'll tell you is there's a native function built into the application. As long as your smartphone still has cell service and you have Bluetooth turned on and you're in range of some of these devices, then you can still perform those basic or primary functions of those devices through the application. So for me, SwitchBot was a bit of an entry point. This was something that I really started a lot of my smart home automation with, and it has grown with me every step of the way. When I look back, you know, I started out with just little button pressing and some IR device control, but I have moved into voice assistant control and then routines and automations within those voice assistants, all the way now to smart home hubs. Every step of the way, SwitchBot has been able to stay in step with the growth in my smart home. So you can check out all the links down below, which will get you to the SwitchBot products we've been talking about today, but we also have coupon codes available for you there to get a little bit money off of what you're doing with SwitchBot. There's even more that you can do with this platform, and I created a hidden tips and tricks video here for the entire SwitchBot platform, where I show you how to do things that will probably give you some more ideas for how to use this in your smart home as you grow. Otherwise, thanks for watching today, guys, and of course, don't hate, automate.